You're listening to the Vocabit Podcast, where I help students improve their vocabulary for the SAT, ACT, and life itself using my unique and research-backed story-based method. On this podcast, I'm sharing the best tips and tricks for a more enriched vocabulary and pain-free test day. Hello, and welcome to the Vocabit Podcast. I'm Erica Abbott, a former English and history teacher, the author of the young adult novel Ahead of Her Time, and the founder of the eponymously named vocabulary company Vocabit. Eponymously meaning named after me, by the way. If you slow that word down, you'll catch that nom in there, eponymously, which comes from the Latin root for name. You'll also catch that root in words like nomenclature, how we name things, nominate, putting someone's name forward for something, or even nombre in Spanish. But I digress. As I record this, it is March 2020, and we are in the middle of the COVID-19 crisis. Schools across the country are shut down, some for a few weeks, some for the rest of the semester. And I had no intention of starting a podcast right now. But I think it's important that those of us who work in education do everything that we can to help out right now, especially with free resources like a podcast. I will go over more vocabulary-specific content in the next episode, you know, how my method works, stuff like that. But for today, I wanted to share a little mindset tip to keep in mind as we dive in. It's called The Question Secret, and it's something that I learned from Natalie Bacon. She talks about how the human brain is essentially a computer, and one of its primary functions is finding answers to the questions you ask it. If I say, what's two plus two? I bet that almost without any conscious thought, the number four popped into your head. This is an amazing gift, but during difficult times, it can become a double-edged sword. Because your brain is constantly looking to provide answers to the questions you ask, it can be helpful to step back and really consider, what questions am I asking my brain? And are the answers to those questions going to help me? So a common question right now is, what is going on? And that's a totally valid question. But once you find out what's going on, that can sometimes lead to questions like, Why is this happening to me? Why is this so annoying? Why is this so hard? Why does this stink so much? And the answers to those questions are almost guaranteed to not make you feel good. At best, it'll just send you into a cycle of complaining. Why is this so annoying? The answers are going to be something like, because I'm trapped at home, I can't leave, I can't see my friends, I can't even work out to get some stress relief because they closed all the gyms. Ugh! You gave your brain a question, and it accurately answered it. Let me take this one step further, though. If you ask your brain those types of questions, not only might it send you into a cycle of complaining, it can actually be really bad for your mental health. Your brain is going to get those answers, and it has no concept of politeness, no concept of, I'd rather not go there. It will get you those answers, even if it means dragging them out of some pit of insecurity in your mind. So if you ask a question like, why is this so hard? It might respond with something like, because you're not as smart as everyone else. You are never good at English or math or whatever it is. And now you don't even have a teacher. You're not smart enough to figure this out on your own. This is too hard. I can't do this. Whew. Okay. Everyone, shake your head. Get that negativity out because you don't need to go there. Remember how I said the question secret is a double edged sword? It can also be so helpful in pulling you out of negativity and helping you find solutions during these difficult times. If you just rephrase the question as, how can I make this easier instead of, why is this so hard? Your answers, and therefore your mindset, your results, and your life, will look so different. Instead of that swirl of self-sabotage, your answers might be something like, I can make this easier by asking someone for help. Boom. Done. You get help, you move on. Instead of complaining about how you can't go to the gym, if you ask, how can I make this better? It might say, start a sit-up challenge where you do 50 sit-ups a day. You can do this from home, and your abs will be more ripped than ever by the time this is done or find a good streaming workout, or whatever. The point is, you will start to find solutions if you ask the right questions. And maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think people really talk about this. They say, you know, stay positive, but they don't really tell you how. This question secret is something that I hope really helps you right now. It's a great tool and one that will really help you moving forward. All right, that's it for today. Like I said, I will dive into more vocabulary-specific content in the coming episodes. But I really believe it's important to get your head in the right place before anything else because, quite frankly, you're not going to do much learning if you're in that self-sabotaging swirl I mentioned. 
This tip and a lot of others that are equally unconventional are available as part of the Vocabit membership. You can find out more at vocabit.com, and that's V-O-C and then Abbott like my last name, A-B-B-E-T-T. And one last thing, because I'm trying to do everything I can to help you guys right now, I've put together a totally free guide for good question swaps. Did you ever see those eat this, not that books? This is like ask this, not that. And it goes over some really great common swaps that you can make during this time. And you can find that at vocabit.com slash swaps, S-W-A-P-S. All right, I'll see you next time.